What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of Dauntless Outdoors. Sorry for the long intervals in between uh, episodes here. Weather's been pretty terrible. Colin's getting suited up. Yes, sir. The water is 66, very cold. We've had some bad weather recently and we're on top of a barge. So we're gonna see how it goes. We're in like 55 feet of water. Got the jug out. This looks very good. You can see the line going all the way down for the most part and you can see dark and light, so we're gonna see how it goes. Catch you guys in the water. What's going on, y'all? Thanks for tuning in. Um, this here is my first dive on this barge, and we weren't seeing anything too crazy. Colin had took a dive before me, and he didn't see any snapper or anything that we were hoping to see. So we were kind of just checking it out, seeing if there's anything else really worth shooting here, and I'm kind of up high in the water column as you can tell i looked inside and i didn't see anything so i was just looking around for pelagics or something and as you see here there are some big old gags that one's probably about 22 that closest one up in the water column and they were not smart but that's about all we saw here so we just moved all right we just got to the second spot that last spot wasn't the greatest there was a lot of big gags unfortunately it's not season but now we are in 50 feet of water, it got a little warmer, and the viz is absolutely crazy. I don't know if you can see like everything, but we can see rocks from the boat 50 feet, which hardly ever happens. We got a jug out there. We're kind of just gonna swim around and see what happens. So, catch you guys in the water. Hey, what's going on guys? Colin here. So this is my first dive on the second spot of the day. We just moved from that barge, and we're now in an area we typically dive super clear super beautiful day and i'm diving right on top of a whole bunch of snapper here and i, I kind of just get to sit there and, and choose a good one that swims in front of me able to get a solid holding shot there swim right over grab my shaft and swim up with my fish always best to uh, retrieve your fish when you can What's going on? It's Josh again. Um, Colin had just gone down, secured that pretty nice snapper, the first one of the day, and I had already taken a couple dives, but I hadn't seen anything really worth shooting. And as you see, I go down, and I kind of just am being decisive because we haven't been out in a while, and I kind of just wanted to shoot some fish. So this snapper gave me a shot. I took it, and I made sure to go secure the fish before I uh, got too stuck. And obviously, you only want to do this just to try and prevent having to take a second dive and waste a bunch of time, and also to prevent a bunch of sharks from showing up. But got the fish out and secured my first fish of the day. So after I got that fish in the boat, I went back down, and as you see, there's just a ton of snapper here, and I had nothing against shooting a couple of them. I wanted to have some good dinner, so this one gave me a shot, and I decided I was going to take it. I should have pulled faster when I shot, and I should have pulled faster on the line, so I could have, like, actually not have this fish get stuck. But as you see, I shot under that rock, which I didn't know, and... As about right here in the water column, I start pulling and my shaft is getting stuck up under it and that shark's pretty close. So I just decided to abort and go to the surface. I mean, I figured, oh well, if this fish gets eaten, it gets eaten. But as you see, I loosen up my reel, put out a ton of line so we can swim away from the shark. And this is me going back down what my... Uh, what my plan was, was to come back down and hopefully he hit under a rock. And that is exactly what happened. So I go back down here, pull my shaft out from under this rock, and then I trace down my mono to see exactly where this snapper is. I've got Colin above me watching to make sure the sharks don't come too close. And as you see, get my line off right there, 
and you can see that snapper is wedged up in there perfectly to where a shark couldn't get him. This is the best case scenario if you have to take a second dive back down. As you see, there's still a couple sharks around, but that's what we got buddy divers for. So, pretty good dive there. So after securing that fish, we took a couple more dives and Colin went down a good bit off this rock pile here and he noticed that there was a bunch of good fish swimming next to it. And on my way down, I don't know if you guys could see it or not, there was a hogfish in between those two. And if you look really closely, you can see him turn into that rock. And there's also an American Red on the right over there. I don't know if you guys saw that or not. but. I could have taken the shot right there, but I didn't want to shoot super hard under that rock and also like land a bad shot on this hogfish. I thought he was just going to be right there and easy to shoot. But I look up under here and I absolutely cannot find him. We take a good bit more dives on this rock and we actually do not see this hogfish again. So we've been diving on this rock probably two or three times before this. Knew there were fish here, and I came down with my gun uh, loaded up with only one band, just so if I shot into a rock, I didn't uh, destroy my shaft. And as I'm coming around, these two snapper give me a perfect lineup shot, so I just had to take it. I was able to get a good holding shot on them. Unfortunately, I couldn't retrieve them on the same dive, but a couple of back on it, and we're able to get them. So Colin just secured that pair of snapper. Obviously we had to take a back dive to get them out. Wasn't too big of a deal, they were just right in there. He just didn't want to take them out on his first dive because of sharks and all that. But as you see, there's plenty more snapper under there. So I go back down and two of them I lined up right there and we couldn't find that hogfish, which I wanted to shoot, but oh well. I wanted to make sure I didn't have to take a back dive here, so I decided I was going to pull on them. I knew I shot both of them pretty close to the face, and I just decided I would pull because there was no other rocks under there that they could have got stuck under. So I just pulled both of them out, and that worked out pretty good. So I just secured both of those snapper. I go right back down after Colin takes one. Colin didn't see anything too big and he wasn't too interested in shooting anymore. So I'm looking under this rock and I spot two decent ones. The one in the back is much bigger than the front one. So I decide, you know what, why not take a shot up under there and I tried doing the same thing that I did to the first pair, but I could not get them to come out. I pulled pretty hard and they both ripped off, which was pretty unfortunate ripped off at the same time somehow right about now and I was like okay so we didn't feel like messing with it anymore so we just left that rock alone so we were headed back to the boat I reloaded my gun and we got back to the boat and I did not feel like unloading it so I went down and I was like hey if I see anything worth shooting I'll just unload it on the fish so go down spot this decent hogfish he was about 16 inches and I decided, you know what, why not? He's a pretty good eating fish, and I had a loaded gun. So he's swimming around, just doing a typical hogfish style swim, and turns pretty decently there. I decided to take the shot, and secured my first hogfish of the day. It wasn't too bad, and secured a quick hogfish. So pretty cool way to unload the gun.
what's going on. We just got to the third spot. We're now in about 58 feet of water. Pretty rocky. Um, the last spot we shot seven snapper and a hogfish. We're trying to shoot a, maybe a couple more hogfish, maybe catch a lobster or something like that. Got a jug in the water. This is still pretty good. There's a little bit of murk on the bottom, but we're gonna see how it goes. So we swap spots and I know you guys have seen this video or this rock in past videos if you really pay attention. And look under there, typically there's lobster or snapper or anything just kind of hiding up under there, but there wasn't anything this time. But on this spot there's typically a good bit of hogfish. So I spotted one out in the distance and I was making a couple grunts but he still wouldn't move so I decided I was going to go to him. They're not the smartest fish there is, so I just approached him, got a shot, and Colin wasn't diving with me on this spot, so you noticed I did not grab that fish. I didn't want to get tangled on the bottom or deal with sharks, so I just let that fish stay there and pulled him up once I got to the surface. Colin was in the boat because he didn't know if this spot was going to be good or not, and I was just checking it out. So. It was a decent hogfish, about 15 and a half. So I decided I was going to take another dive to see if there was anything else worth shooting and if it was worth another person diving in. So I'm in the, the water here on the bottom and looking around. I saw a couple more hogfish, nothing too crazy. And then this one swam up. He was illegal and he was like 16 inches. Nothing big. But I decided, you know what? If I'm going to leave this spot soon anyways, might as well take the shot. So I turn back around and wait for the right opportunity on this fish. I didn't want to shoot that rock again and have to deal with it getting stuck. He turns, get a perfect shot on him, complete sound shot, and shaft was pretty close to that rock, so I didn't want to go grab it, and I just pulled him up. Pretty nice second hogfish at this spot. Still weren't sure if it was really worth diving this so I took one more dive here hoping to see some bigger ones and unfortunately there wasn't anything too big typically when you make enough commotion on a spot that's when the bigger hogfish will roll in but we weren't seeing any this day except for the one that went under that rock and I never saw again so I was hoping that would happen here a big one would show up but it, it just didn't happen so as you see, that hogfish is right in front of me. He's legal, he's like 16 inches as well, and I decided why not. I grunt, he turned perfectly, and this was towards the beginning of my dive, and I knew I had plenty of time, and I hadn't seen a shark on this spot yet. So, I secured that fish, and that was my last dive on this spot. I took three dives, shot three hogfish, so. After that, we left this spot and went to another one. Alrighty, just got to the fourth spot. We are now in 53 feet of water and we got Colin, he's eating a sandwich. This is literally crazy. Um, <laughs> the water, it's, uh, it's pretty blue. And we got four hogfish and seven snapper now. We got three at the last spot, so we'll see how it goes. So we just got to this new spot. I think this is my first dive on this spot. It might be my second, I can't remember, but I just wanted to see what was in the area, so. I'm laying on the bottom being pretty calm, and I like this method. I, I grab a little rock, and I kind of shred it on another rock, and it makes a good bit of noise, and it attracts a lot of snapper and stuff like that. But I wasn't seeing anything, so I just decided I was going to sit here idle and see if anything showed up to the, the calls that I just did. And I look up, and this shark swims right up to me. It's a pregnant um, reef or sandbar. I can't remember which one it is, but wasn't too amped up, just real calm. So I'm just looking around, not seeing anything big, and I just thought it was a pretty cool clip to show. But yeah, we weren't seeing anything too crazy. So this is just a quick clip of my last dive of the day. I was going down and I stumbled across these big old live fish and I figured I'd, uh, I'd take them off the reef.
So Colin just shot both of those um, lionfish there. Pretty cool. We actually filleted those guys up and ate them. That was my first time actually trying them. We shot a couple of them just because they're nuisances and, and you're supposed to get rid of them. But they, these were the first ones we actually ate and I thought they were pretty good. They were pretty soft and flaky meat. So definitely gonna shoot more if I see them. And then I saw Colin shoot those. I went down and I had four out of my five hogfish and I was hoping to see another one. So I just go to the bottom here, making a little bit of noise, but I'm not seeing anything too crazy. But I did spot one hogfish pretty far in the distance, and I was like, you know what, this is going to be my last dive anyways. So I swam over there and just waited for him to turn. And he turned to the left, got a nice shot, and then Colin was already about 15 yards away from me, so I didn't feel like going down and maybe risking that shark coming back or anything like that so i just pulled him up after i got to the surface great way to end the day thank you guys so much for watching we really appreciate all the comments and likes and all that stuff but catch you guys in the next one all right just got back to the house here's the whole haul so it was a pretty good day offshore really good viz and we also ended it out with two lionfish not too bad we're gonna see if we can't do it again pretty soon Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't already, hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll catch you in the next one.